All right, pre-meds, in this video, we're gonna tackle three MCAT style questions on electrochemical cells. If you need a content refresher, head over to our video on electrochemical cell essentials and brush up before trying out these questions. Let's get started with question number one. All right, pause this video, give this question a try on your own first, and then we'll walk through it together. So let's start off with the information they've provided to us in the question stem. We have a galvanic cell setup, which means that we know some things right off the bat about this type of electrochemical cell. They've also given us our two half reactions. These are both in their reduction potential. So these are half reactions showing a reduction reaction. We know that A, because it says reduction potential here, but also anytime we see our electrons on the reactant side, we are going to have a reduction reaction because this uh, ion is gaining electrons, reduction is gain of electrons. So we have two reduction potentials, of course, in a real redox reaction, we also need an oxidation potential. So one of these guys is going to flip in our real reaction. So they're asking us, will an oxidation reduction reaction occur spontaneously? Our first thing that we could know, and this is our secret rule of the MCAT for electrochemical cells, is that a galvanic or voltaic, right? Voltaic and galvanic are synonyms cell by definition are spontaneous, all right? So just by knowing that this is a galvanic cell or a voltaic cell, we know that these are spontaneous cells. So the answer to start off with is yes, we can immediately eliminate C and D. And now our second secret rule is based on an equation, which is our uh, derivative of our NERST equation, where delta G, del uh, free change in energy, is equal to negative NF E cell, all right, the overall cell potential. So if we need our cell to be spontaneous, our delta G needs to be less than zero. Very good. So it needs to be less than zero. And in order for delta G to be less than zero, according to this equation, what does our overall cell potential need to be? This equation, yep, it needs to be positive. It needs to be greater than zero. So E cell needs to be greater than zero in order for it to be spontaneous. And we know it has to be spontaneous because that's a characteristic of a galvanic or voltaic cell. So without even doing math, we can know that our E cell has to be positive. So we can choose D. So with these types of questions, a couple simple rules. Galvanic cell equals spontaneous. Spontaneous means negative delta G and positive overall cell potential will get us our answer quickly and effectively. All right, you can write in the comments if you have any questions about this first practice problem, and let's move on to practice problem number two. Same thing with this question. Pause the video, try it on your own, and then we'll work through it together. Okay, so we have the exact same setup as before, our galvanic cell with our two half reactions. We're now asked which reaction occurs at the anode. This gets into our second set of secret rules for electrochemical cell. In a galvanic cell, and I'll just draw a little sketch of a galvanic cell here with our salt bridge, right, and our two terminals, and our resistor here, right? Conventionally speaking, we always draw the anode on the left, right, and we always draw the cathode on the right. And in a galvanic cell, electrons always flow from anode to cathode. So electrons always flow from anode to cathode. That means that the anode is losing electrons, right? As those electrons flow to the cathode. And if it's losing electrons, what type of reaction is that? We can use our mnemonic oil rig. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. So if we're losing electrons, we're oxidizing. All right, so the oxidation reaction is happening at the anode. There's also a fun mnemonic for that, which is anox red cat. So oxidation happens at the anode, anox, red cat reduction happens at the cathode. Couple quick little secret rules here. Now we have to figure out for these two reactions, which one is the oxidation reaction. So if we remember from our previous question here, right, we did add up these potentials to equal a positive number. Now, the other way to think about these potentials is conceptually. This is saying, a reduction potential that's positive is saying, hey, this, uh, this reaction is likely to happen. It wants to be reduced. This guy, being negative, says, you know what? This reaction doesn't really want to happen. <laughs> it's not got as much potential, right? It doesn't have as much potential to happen in this way. 
So we can look at these two half reactions and recognize that if we were to pick which one is likely to be the reduction reaction in a spontaneous galvanic cell, it's going to be the one more likely to happen. So copper is probably staying as our reduction potential, and so that's going to be at the cathode. So right off the bat, we can eliminate anything to do with copper because our reduction reaction happening at the cathode is likely going to be copper since that's the more likely half reaction to happen in reduction. And then to turn a reduction potential into an oxidation potential, we flip it so it'll become zinc solid and then zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons, right? So we just rewrite it there. I'll do aqueous. And then we also flip the sign of the potential to become an oxidation potential. Plus 0.44 volts. All right, so now we can see actually when it's an oxidation potential, it's a much bigger positive number, right? So this is just saying, hey, it's, it's got potential to be oxidized. It wants to be oxidized. And then if we recall from our previous question, the E cell needs to be greater than zero. And how we calculate that, how I like to calculate that, is by taking the oxidation potential and adding it to the reduction potential, right? So I flip the sign of the potential to make it an oxidation potential, and then I add those two together. It's got to be greater than zero. So if we're just looking at these values, right, the one we need to flip so that they add together to be greater than zero is the negative 0.44. So we can tell right away that our oxidation reaction is going to be this guy, the one we rewrote here, and so it's going to be B, right? A is describing a reduction reaction. So we could have also, for test taking purposes, eliminated A and C because those are both describing reduction reactions and we know if we're at the anode, it's an oxidation reaction. So several ways to do this question, but there's a couple key rules to recap. One, Anode is the site of oxidation. Oxidation is loss of electrons, and that's going to happen in a galvanic cell with the half reaction that's got the lowest reduction potential or the highest oxidation potential for its half reaction. All right, if you have any questions or need clarification on this slightly more challenging question, go ahead and put them down in the comments. I'll make sure to answer them for you. Next up, we're gonna do a mixed topic question where we're gonna apply electrochemical cell principles to the electron transport chain in the mitochondria. Before we do, I'm Amanda Brem, and I'm an MCAT coach that's been helping students on their pre-med journey since 2019. Please remember to subscribe to this channel for more videos on MCAT content, test-taking strategies, and mental fitness tips to help you perform your best on test day. If you want more in-depth interactive lessons on topics like this one, including active practice strategies and study planning help, go ahead to the description below and click the link to register for my next available MCAT course. Now, let's go ahead and tackle this challenging electrochemical cells question. All right, you know what to do. Go ahead and pause this video, try it on your own, and then we'll walk through how to approach this question together. All right, they're telling us if the ETC, the electron transport chain, is a spontaneous process, all right, we know lots of things about spontaneity already, which of the following must be true about the redox reactions within each of the four complexes? Okay, with a must be true question, I always like to say, okay, one of these has to be true. So one true, and then three of these answers are either maybes or false. All right, so we need something that's 100% true based on the information provided, and three of these answers are either gonna be like iffy or false. So we're gonna go through and do a strong elimination strategy here, but we've got a little prediction where we know things about spontaneity, right? We know the overall delta G needs to be less than zero, the overall E cell needs to be greater than zero, right? We already know some things about this setup just from the word spontaneity or spontaneous. So let's go through option by option. The electron carrying complexes in the ETC have E naught values or electrical cell potential values of greater than that of oxygen. All right, so we do need a little electron transport chain concepts here. So I'm gonna sketch it up below. We've got several complexes, right? We have complex one, two, three, four, and they're a series of spontaneous redox reactions, right? So electrons are getting shuffled, right? From here to here, electrons. And at the very end, we have oxygen. And oxygen is what's known as the final electron acceptor. If it's accepting electrons, what do you think is happening to it? It's getting reduced, right? Gain of electrons. And it's getting reduced specifically to water, 
all right? And so we're gaining these electrons at the end and then we're producing water. So if oxygen is the final electron acceptor, if it's the very last thing to accept electrons in a spontaneous process, its potential to be reduced needs to be really high, right? Because it needs to want those electrons more than anybody else in this chain because it's the final one to accept the electrons. If any of these complexes had a bigger E cell value, E naught value than oxygen, then the electrons would stop there. There's no desire to move forward in a spontaneous process if it already has the highest potential to be reduced. So this cannot be true. Right? Cannot be true because oxygen as the final electron acceptor needs to have the highest E naught value. All right? Because that's how that spontaneous chain works. So far, so good. The overall free energy delta G of the electron transport chain is greater than zero. Nope. That is opposite our prediction. We know that it's actually less than zero, so it can't be our answer here. All right, so now we're just down to C and D. So as electrons are passed from one carrier to the next, the E naught values increase. That sounds a little bit like our prediction based on answer option A, right? Where as we go down the chain, the reduction potentials need to get bigger and bigger so that the electrons want to keep going and getting gained by the next thing down the line, right? So that sounds pretty good. That sounds at least possible. We'll leave that one. The reaction O2 to H2O has a negative reduction potential. If it had a negative reduction potential, that means it's unlikely to happen, right? Unlikely to be reduced. And that would mean that this is not a spontaneous process. So D also feels pretty wrong with our prediction and C is our best possible answer. Again, this is a great example of a critical reasoning question that brings in biochemistry and general chemistry and even a little physics with a teeny sprinkle of content about how the electron transport chain works and our secret rules for spontaneity and electrochemical cells. All right, that last question, super likely to show up in your MCAT. It's got all of the critical reasoning components plus bringing in multiple subject areas. So let me know in the comments below how you did on that question and if you need any clarification on what we talked about in this video. As always, happy studying.